I'm about to ask you to spend the next nine minutes of your life to listen to the story that I'm about to tell. And the video on this doesn't have a lot to do with the story. In fact, it has nothing to do with the story. But I needed something that you could look at while you were listening so that you wouldn't say, I'm bored and walk away. So this is to the masses that actually listen to our podcast. We have 34 subscribers and usually about seven or eight listeners. And I'd like you to just take a couple minutes, just for me, and give this a listen. Thanks. I'm going to tell you a story. So, my wife and I are both police officers. And that's not completely unusual. The cliche normally is a police officer and a nurse, a police officer and possibly a firefighter, a police officer, and, or someone in that, that area, a paramedic. Uh, not even don't even, it doesn't even matter today you know which gender is which it's just usually that's kind of the cliche we weren't and somehow we met and then we became police officers and we did it at the same time and that was kind of neat now we decided that we were going to take a walk through this campus area it wasn't a college it wasn't a school but it was this area attached to sort of an outdoor mall type of thing and I don't go out without a firearm. And a lot of people will call me a barbarian. However, you might want a barbarian like me or my wife if something bad happened. And also, I believe in protecting ourselves. And I'm not saying I'm better than anybody else. I'm not saying anything like that whatsoever. It's just sort of the reality of where the world is right now that you might want some people out there that could fend off an attack of some sort. So we were out and about and I'm quite concealed. And my wife, her particular firearm is completely concealed because she has it in her purse and has a special purse to be able to get into it. And she's not one of these people that has to have a, a, a Vendi purse or anything like that. It's just she has the right purse for what her needs are to be able to carry. So we're both carrying and, you know, who cares? We're going to look into a bookshop. So we go in, we take a look around and I get approached by this couple. And it's a, a, a what I would say is a kid, probably in his early 20s and with a female who's also in her early 20s. And he shows me his badge. Well, let me say he shows me a badge, which I thought was kind of weird. And he says, hey, I'm a police officer. Now, we're in one municipality. The police officer that he says he's part of, or the, excuse me, the police department that he says he's part of is on the other end of our state. And it's a touristy area, so I get it. You know, they might have been up here. But he looks at me and he says, uh, where'd you buy your gun? And I'm thinking, that makes no sense. Cops don't ask cops where they bought a gun. Now, I'll say this, I kind of am the stereotypical looking cop. Short hair, I probably have sort of a walk that you could probably say that guy might be a cop or a, a, I don't know. But he, he asked me again, he shows me this badge without an ID. And I thought, this is, this is weird because I know the way I conceal and the way I carry, no one can see my firearm unless something really unusual happened. And that didn't happen. And my guess was he just was sort of throwing spaghetti at the wall and saying, this guy has got to be a cop. So I, I said, well, show me your ID. And I said, are you on the job? And he just looked at me. And in the cop world, when you say, are you on the job? That's kind of like a signal that we have that are you a cop? The funny thing is, that's on every cop show on the planet where you'll hear someone say, hey, on the job. And everyone should know this by now. And this person didn't. So his other half or girlfriend or whatever it was comes up and says, we're both police officers and we saw you near this guy who we know who is a hoodlum and we just wanted to check things out. So I said, OK, show me your identification. And she shows me a badge which means nothing. The identification is, means something. There's a long pause. And I said, hey, how long have you been on the job? And she looks at me and she says, um, well, about as long as he was. 
I said, what was the class you were in in the academy? Well, um, I graduated just after him. Now, in the police world, you know what your academy class was. You know the number of it. Generally, they have a number or a date range or whatever the case may be. You might be part of the 212th Training Academy. And in the, in the same state, you're going to know just kind of the nomenclature of it. And something wasn't making sense. And I pulled her aside as he kind of walked away and my wife was watching him and he walked away and I kind of laughed. I said, these people aren't cops. And I said to her, are you a police officer? She said, no, we're in the academy together. I said, okay. And you're doing this. Why? And she said, well, we thought that we, we, we thought that you were around some people that we knew were kind of bad guys. Which doesn't make any sense because unless they truly knew that these people were bad guys, they, they, they're not in the street, they're not in the road. So I just decided to kind of go light with her and say, what's his name? Well, uh, John, stop it. What's his name? And it, it, there was that long pause of weirdness. And my, my wife and I have what we call our duress code, where we have a, a, a signal if we can't talk or we shouldn't talk that we can give to each other. And we have something we can say where we can bring in this duress code to this. And I thought about using it. And then she gave me the signal because she was watching him. Turns out he wasn't a cop. He wasn't even in the academy. He was sort of a, a hoodlum kind of guy that was dating someone that was in the academy. Now, obviously, we had to do something at this point because they had crossed a line and especially him, but she kind of facilitated it. And what we did was we called up their department. The interesting thing was they were from a department that was gigantic, more than a thousand people, a thousand employees, thousand cops and administrator type of people. And they were just completely uninterested. And we just walked away. Now, what's the lesson to be taken here? Don't pretend to be a cop if you're not a cop. And if you get entangled in a relationship where someone wants to play that game, you need to kind of really think about why would a person do this? They want to do it because of power. They wanted to have power over us and we didn't capitulate. And that was the thing that kind of turned this around because... If the person said, what if he said, well, I want to see your gun, give it to me. All right, you're a police officer, you have a badge. Here you go. And then he runs away with it. Uh, I, I'd have a hard time explaining that. I would never do it, ever, ever. But that would be a hard time for me. And it would be a hard time for him because eventually he would have gotten caught, most likely. And it would have ended her career as a police officer. So I guess the, the moral of the story here is if you ever get into a role where you're a police officer, because I know some of the people that listen to this podcast are interested in this, watch out who you become entangled with. And I don't mean that entangled in a, in a, in a negative way. I mean it in a way that could damage your future career. This is a great career. No matter how you slice it, you make a lot of money if you want to. You have a lot of time off and you, you get to see a lot of things that are pretty interesting. I'd like some feedback on this. If everyone listens to this or as you listen to this, I know people do listen to this, throw some feedback out there. We'd appreciate that. And I hope you enjoyed this very short episode, which was probably the most personal episode that I've ever had or I've ever um, distributed. And I went without a script. I've gone kind of just, i uh, see how the sounds at the end. And hopefully I'm kind of in the right range. But think about your choices. And if you want to be a police officer, keep listening as we put stuff up. And also think about the long game. Think about what are the consequences of things you do within your life and within your career. Thank you.